Yosef at Tzadik is a bottom line called Yosef Tzadik because he was Omed bin Isayon of this this that we all deal with on a daily basis, married or not married, especially in the modern world. Everything's open because he stood the test of Shmirat Abrit and, and he regarded his holiness and his, his, his purity and, and, and the Brit and he always stood the test of the wife of Potiphar. That's why he's called Yosef the Righteous. Now I want to point out something interesting. If, when we learn the story, the rabbis were not shy to tell us that although Yosef was the greatest person that fought against his Yetzirah for, for women, he is the champion of the world for all eternity about, of, of defeating that Yetzirah. His story is not in any way, shape or form a story of affection. They, they don't hide from telling us that he failed on some level. Because when it came down to it, you read the Torah, it's a bit interesting. How did she get his shirt? It's a little bit, what's going on over here? He had a moment of weakness. This, this champion of champions had his moment of weakness. And he had to draw on the koach of his father, the picture of his father. He was mechazek and he was omen. But it wasn't a perfect story. Hashem has a perfect world with perfection. That's in heaven. Angels are perfect. They don't have names. Angels don't have names because what they do is not their own. They're just spiritual robots. Yaakov asked, what's your name? Name, what am I name? We don't have a name. We don't. An angel is not real. An angel is a robot. Perfection is not real. Perfection is just a, 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 a robot that Hashem in heaven. Human beings have names. Each one is unique. Each one has his unique struggles. And it's because of that name that it's his. What he accomplishes is his own. He has a name. It's him doing it. An angel doesn't have an identity. It's not a real Matthias. It's just a robot. So Yosef Atzadik, the champion of beating the Yetzirah for women, almost failed. He had a moment of weakness. From that, there were 10 drops that, that came out. And this leads to a lot of trouble. He was going to have 12 kids. He only had two kids. And the 10 Maradams in the future. It's not a pretty story. The rabbis don't hide anything from us. But that's the story we have for the greatest fighter against this Yetzirah. With the struggles, with the failure, he came out a winner. That's story number one. Second story about Yosef, it's ironic, maybe not as famous as this one, is this. The Torah, there's a pasuk in Tehillim that says, Ashrei mi, ashrei mi, ashrei sam Hashem miftacho. Fortunate is the one that puts all of his trust in God. Who is that pasuk talking about? So the Midrash says that that pasuk about the ultimate mamin in Hashem is talking about Yosef HaTzadik. So he's Yosef HaTzadik because he was the ultimate in fighting as Yetzirah against the, the Taba of Nashim. But he was also the ultimate mami. He was the ultimate believer in Hashem in a dark, difficult, confusing, chaotic world. He was able to see through all of that and Omed in that challenge as well. And he's called the mami. Look in the dictionary. Who's the mami? Yosef. But the Midrash is very puzzling because right after it says that this Pasuk is talking about Yosef, the ultimate believer in Hashem, ultimate trust in Hashem, then it says, guess what? He was punished because he asked the Sarah Mashkim to remember him and mention him to stay in jail for two extra years. So we have the ultimate mamin being punished for not having perfect faith. Perfection is not our story. It's not what Hashem is expecting from us. And it's not what we should be expecting from ourselves either. Yosef was punished because on his level, some level of shortcoming. But it's from the punishment we realize, wow, he was, he was light years ahead of everyone. To be punished for asking someone for help that could help you? That's insane. We would all be chayiv in that situation to tell the guy, listen, you're going to be in front of power, the head of all of the mishpat in this country? I'm innocent. Tell him. I shouldn't even send him there for that. We would be doing a mitzvah. If we wouldn't be doing it, we'd be called a fool. Chassid shoteh. So how could Yosef be punished? That's how much his level of emunah was. And I'll give you a quick mashal to appreciate it. If you're driving in a car down a very swift, winding, dangerous road, right? And you're in the passenger seat. Because, of course, someone else is driving. Who's driving? Shem is driving. And you're scary, but you're enjoying the ride. It's a bit scary. Finally, you come to one turn. It seems like, you know, Hashem's got this, too much, his foot on the gas too much. It's a bit faster than you're comfortable with. So you decide you're going to help Hashem, and you, you, you help him steer the wheel to make sure he doesn't go off the road. What are you doing? Hashem, Hashem's driving. Hashem's got it under control. Shame on you. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna interfere with Hashem driving you down the road of life? That's the level of your say. He saw Hashem, Yud K, Vav K, of his face. He didn't see the world we see. He saw Hashem, master orchestrator, director of life. He saw everything. The hidden things were real to him. On that level, you ask for help too much, shame on you, you're punished. But from the level, we understand what an exalted person he was. But again, the point I want to bring out and stress is, 
it also has this level of failure. When we do our best and we give Hashem what we can, that's perfection for Hashem. It's not perfect, but it's perfect to Him because we did it sincerely and we did it like a child that just wants to do for Hashem and make Him happy. So we can't be perfect, but we can give Hashem what He perfectly desires.